If you're doing the lessons one at a time, the, today's lesson my, is My Holiness Shines Bright and Clear Today. <laughs> and Jesus gives us a little extra boost there, <laughs> heading into this. Uh, well, this morning, um, Again, we thought we would come down to practicality, because I love it. I've enjoyed all of your, uh, your questions and comments so much, because uh, miracles are such a collaborative effort. And that was, I like songs like that, because it's like, it's, it's spirit and Broadway brought together. And, and I don't know if I can ever even comprehend that. It's so spectacular. And, and today's lesson about shining bright and clear and holiness, and, and I love how we can share examples because we relate to examples. You know, we need examples. We actually need lots of examples as part of our convincing. Lots and lots of examples. And then we start to get lots and lots of first-hand experiences of examples. And even last night, that little episode we watched, I don't know if you really caught that at the ending. I was sharing it with the group at the meeting table today. They're like, really? Did, I, didn't, I didn't see that. I didn't, I didn't see that. And I was like, oh, it was all there. It's all there. You know, in the end, you know, Amy takes the hand of her partner and she won't be stopped and she knows that now it's time to transcend the system. We all know that we have believed in systems, but there comes a point when you have to go directly to the light. You have to, you have to transcend the system and basically, you know, she has that point where she's got her coach, and she's been following her coach, and, and she's been hanging in there with the coach, but then she's like, in the end, it's like she gets final things, you know, you're going to meet your life partner, do I know him? No. Uh, and she's like, oh, and you have a, you're granted this one wish, you know, you can, you get to meet anyone on the system that you would like to, you know, say goodbye to. And I don't think she really wants to say goodbye to love. 
but she's willing at that point to let say goodbye to the coach. <laughs> coach, count to four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> so, you know, remember that the Holy Spirit's just a bridge. And the Holy Spirit, in heaven, the Holy Spirit doesn't take, doesn't have a voice. Because it's just His pure oneness. The Holy Spirit's an eternal creation. Christ is an eternal creation. And the Holy Spirit was created by God, but the Holy Spirit didn't have to seem to take on a voice until there was a need for a voice. When Christ seemed to fall asleep and was found in a lost in a far country, in a far foreign land, time and space, that had nothing to do with eternity, then there was a need for a voice in calling Christ back to the remembrance of creation. So. But in heaven, the Holy Spirit doesn't have a voice. And you might say in, in our little episode last night, Amy went through a lot of lessons and she was starting to say, oh, there's got to be more than all these forms. There's got to be true love. And then in the end, she sent the, the coach skipping off and she had to start to realize that there's actually a point where you have to let go of the system that the whole point in the system, inside the, the whole system is, yes you have to follow guidance, but the whole system of even finding your soulmate or your life partner, you know, is, a lot of people that's their, their whole aim in life, is just to find their life partner. And then what? Grow old, get sick and die. It's still it still doesn't end well for interpersonal relationships and soulmates, does it? It still doesn't end well, you know. And so if that's your goal, and that was the system's goal, is like, you know, you are, you are 98, 99, or 90, 98.8. Yes, 99.8 percent chance of guaranteed of finding your life partner. But from within the system that makes this seem like a pretty good system. But remember the whole system is part of what? The rebellion against love. So what is the top goal in the system to find your life partner? It turns out at the very end when they get whooshed up beyond the system, back into the real world, back into the happy dream, there's a thousand simulations and 998 rebellions and two that don't rebel against the light. Whew. That was the final tally. Thousand simulations, 998 rebellions. Remember in the Matrix when Neo makes it down to see the architect and the screen lights up of all the anomalies of Neo screaming, kicking, fighting? You know, those are all the anomalies of hell. The anomalies of different variations of trying to make yourself apart from the way God created you. So out of those thousand simulations, 998 rebellions recorded and in the end they went for God. They, they did not rebel. They, they had to let go of the system. They had to let go of their belief in finding a lifelong partner. They had to let go of everything of time and space to not rebel against the light. And so the ending of that, it was pretty quick, but it's all there. I told you it was going to the atonement. These, that was relationship, that was ascension through relationships. You end, you give up all autonomous ideas about love, including interpersonal soulmate love and go whew, whisking into eternity with just one decision. You escape 
thousands of years and ten thousands of years just by your willingness to know God and having God be your only goal. If you look at the world through a darkened glass, like Corinthians, you know, the ego's fragmented world, and you start to say, wow, I, I really need to reach the happy dream, I have to reach the real world, I have to reach unified perception. And then you think, what did Jesus say 2,000 years ago? What was that he was saying? Let thine eye be single. Oh my gosh, it's all the same teaching. It hasn't changed. In 2,000 years, Jesus is still teaching us the same thing. Let thine eye be single. And how do we do it? He, he didn't call his course a course in revelation. He called it a course in miracles. He wanted to make it practical because until your mind is ready for revelation, it simply will not experience revelation. It takes a lot of miracles to get the mind ready to have that experience we witnessed at the very end of that uh, episode where they start climbing, you notice how they start climbing up this big ladder where they couldn't even see the top of it and then they, she jumped right on the ladder and he jumped right on and they climbed and when they got about halfway up you saw what happened to the whole simulation. It's, that's how quick it all ends. Jesus says in the Course that once you reach the real world, it's going to be quick. It's going to be quick. The whole system started to fold up because why? There was no need for it. There's no need for more simulations. The rebellion is over. The Lucifer rebellion, it sometimes is called, is over. And Jesus is telling us that message, the Lucifer rebellion is over. The Holy Spirit has answered, has already answered the rebellious idea. Don't put your attention on the rebellion. Take your attention off the timeline. We have graduated from the script is written day and now <laughs> we are ready for a new day. <laughs> we are ready for the resurrection <laughs> day. <laughs> where we take our attention off such questions about the script is written. The script, the script, the script, it was great. The gentleman here, the second gentleman last night, you know, he was like, so what I'm getting is the, the script is not real. Yes, 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 yes. That's what, that's so, yeah. That's what the holy instant's about. That's why we're zooming into the holy instant, that's why we're, do I want the problem or do I want the answer? <laughs> Teach only love for that is what you are. It's really, you know, it starts to come down, it really starts to get simpler and simpler. And you start to realize that spiritual awakening is not really a question of time, but it's a, it's a question of the yes. Am I going to go from the no, the repeating no, which makes linear time, God saying, are you ready? Are you ready to be one with me? No. <laughs> the next day, are you ready now? Is today the day? No. Could you tell me what it means the script is written? Are you ready? <laughs> no. You know, it's like, and then finally, it, resurrection must be yes, 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 wholeheartedly yes. So big of a yes that I forgot what the question was. <laughs> it was like, it's like yes, yes. Instead of the movie with Jim Carrey, Yes Man, it's like yes, spirit, <laughs> yes, yes. And so, what we want to talk about today is Resurrection Day, and it's also the day uh, this evening, which will show the, the movie, Take Me Home. How's that for a title? We've gone from yesterday <laughs> to Take Me Home. <laughs> 
even our movies. So to start it off with easing you in with yesterday, the world was just a silly game we played. So there's that. Then we went to Rocket Man. You know, Rocket Man, we're ready to, to shoot off. And then we went to next. What's next after Rocket Man? What's next after Rocket Man? And then we went through last night Ascension through relationships. Well, that's. And now, finally, our final movie of the week is Take Me Home. Even if you just look at the titles of the movies that Jesus has us doing, he's sending us a message with the titles of the movie. You should have seen the smile on my face when I heard Lilo was going to sing on a clear day, and then I look at the lesson of the day. My holiness shines bright and clear today. And I just was like, oh my gosh, this whole thing is choreographed by Central Casting, JC Central. He's just like, he's like, he's sending it through. He's like, did you get it? <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> And then the next day, did you get it? You know, it's like he's done the whole Holland retreat here in the barn at the castle, all just for our mind to say yes. It's really, that's all we want to do. And there's nothing more, there's no other way to praise the God than by saying yes to forgiveness. Because you, it's like when you talk about praise in this world, you can praise somebody, give them compliments, but... But God has no ego to receive praise by. You can't say, God, good job. Good job. You did good job creating Christ. Really good. Kudos. <laughs> kudos. Kudos. And, but God's like, God doesn't have an ego. So God can't receive praise. Except if you are as you were created. That's a way to praise God to forgive the ego, to release the ego, and accept yourself as God created you, has got to be the, the ultimate praise to God. I am as you created me. There is nothing that's more glorious, that's more humble, that's more uplifting to the Creator than to say, and mean it, and live it, I am as you created me. I am loving because you created me loving. I am joyful because you created me joyful. I am spirit because you created me spirit. That's the humbleness. And today we want to kind of use the example of, of Take Me Home, of the movie that we're going to show tonight as a, as a practical, again, a practical example of miracles. What good are miracles if they don't give you, if they don't uplift you? What good would miracles be if they don't convince you of your spiritual reality? What good are miracles if they don't show you that guidance is better than analysis? That guidance is better than past learning? That guidance and, and tr present trust leading the way is, is the very best thing that you can do or the best that you can offer. The most that you can offer is I will offer my present trust to listen and follow you. I do not know the way, you do know the way. That's why I will listen and follow you. So. Just like this whole Holland retreat, the more you, you know, you'll, you'll just think about this and you'll go, wow, the symbols will just keep hitting you. How amazing, how spectacular, how orchestrated this whole week has been. And what we're going to share about Take Me Home is how orchestrated and given the movie was, just as a backdrop, not as a thing in and of itself, not as a product, not as an outcome, but but just the very listen and follow experience is, is part of the awakening. That's the backdrop that it took. And you know it's been like a giant symphony with many, many aspects, far beyond what you could have ever imagined. And yet, it starts with like a dream and then, and then it takes off.
Yeah, this morning I, I, was, um, I was up and I was thinking about um, this session and I keep hearing case study, case study. Just use take me home as a case study because, yeah, because we can talk a lot about, about what it is like to follow the spirit, but nothing is more concrete than to show it to show what it is like. And I think, yeah, even the other day when I was um, doing the diet session, I gave an instruction. I said, if you have difficulty in getting in touch with your emotions, just don't be afraid to go into specifics. And then a participant asked me, what do you mean? And then I realized, yeah, this word specifics is so clear to me what it means but yet to someone else it's just it's it's a word what does that even mean how does that help to get into your emotion you know just so i i do really feel this this calling just to to be able to somehow um demonstrate a little bit more of what it is like to follow the spirit so yeah, I think Take Me Home is it's, um, a documentary movie. It's an hour and 20 minutes long right now. So how it got started was um, I came to Living Miracles Monastery and I could only stay for three months. I, I for the first time. So I came and I did a lot of mind training during the three months and I had to go back to Australia. And so when I was back there, I had this dream one night and I woke up with this tremendous amount of joy because in my dream, I made a movie, a documentary movie to share the hope that there is another way to share the you know the, the the uplifted feeling of what it feels like to follow the spirit and the dream was so uplifting for me i woke up from it and i thought i'm going to write to david right now to tell him i had this dream it was so uplifting and i want to do it and i you know, many, many years later, right before I started this project, I actually saw that email again. That was t 2011. And in the email, it was very long. I wrote to David that I'm ready to listen and follow. I'm a blank slate because I had no filmmaking experience or any photography technical equi uh, experience. So I'm a very good blank slate for Jesus and he can come through and I will just listen and follow and I'm ready so I was very very excited and David responded by saying great come over to Utah and uh, you will have a team so that was 2011 and I went I went and in the high desert of the monastery then I realized we we um, we didn't have tripods, we didn't have camera, we didn't have microphones. There there was we, we you know there was nothing in terms of multimedia production in any way, and I didn't know what it was needed. So we started by just saying let's let's acquire one camera, like a little camcorder, just a flip. You know you can flip the the, the lid open and. So, and then we buy a tripod and just to see what it feels like to even record something on camera. And a good microphone. And a good microphone. You might also mention the guidance you got in, um, in Australia while you were watching YouTubes yeah. and things because there was a friend who, who said something to you and it really caught your attention. I was in there watching a video of David you know, at that point, his videos were very low quality and grainy, and the sound was just, uh, you, you can barely hear it. So my friend said, you know, the, the quality... <laughs> J 
Jesus is playing every day, just like, oh, play, play, play. <laughs> I think it's good. I think it's good. These are the backup mics in, in case. Just in case. <laughs> You just want to replace this. Oh, okay. Because it makes a noise. Oh, just this one? Yes. This is like a pit stop <laughs> in the race, you know. Pull in for fuel. Okay. Oh. And my friend said to me that, you know, the quality of the teaching is really not matched by the quality of the video. And I, I, I thought that's true. You know, the teaching was so high, was so uplifting. And then you watch the, so I, I just also um, had this feeling like I would be part of it somehow to help, to support, improve the quality of the recording. So that that got used because when I, now looking back, I actually thought it's very symbolic because when I came in 2011, I thought I was so ready to listen and follow for absolutely everything. I can, you know, just hear everything. And, and Jesus said, well, let's just take one step at a time. Let's start with, if you see the outside world as a reflection of, of the inward picture, where I was, what I was ready for was so basic. Was so basic. You know, we have to, yeah, just cables, what is MP3 cable again? So it was all from the beginning. So that's actually the start of um, of a tag team for for all our retreats. So from that point on, gradually over many years, we started to have microphones for our retreats, and we started to have cameras to record YouTube videos, and we started to have editors to edit. And this movie thing just fall way, 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 way back into the awareness because I also realized how impractical I was thinking at the beginning. And it's beautiful too because a little bit of backstory is, you know, Frances was raised in Beijing but and lived in Australia, but she was over at the University of Chicago in the United States on, on scholarships and brilliant. She was a brilliant student. And so she had and had had been married, had your own business uh, very competent and very successful in terms of the world and then and also I think confident like okay I'm a blank slate Jesus let's just make a movie here uh, turn me into like Franco Zeffirelli uh, just morph uh, can you make a movie just give me a minute to download the director okay casting you know but actually like you like so many have who have come in, you know, you, you come in filled with skills and there may even be more mind training and more inner listening, like opening the channel and, and following. And, and obviously Lilo's back behind the live stream camera and she had, I, up here you had almost forgotten about your Broadway skills and then you can hear, these are like top of the line Broadway skills and yet it takes so much patience to just trust and say, I need to open this channel and I don't want to step ahead. And that's what I think you're sharing is that you are quite skilled, quite competent in many areas and, and really ready to fulfill it. And, and yet there was preliminary steps that Jesus had in mind too. And I think the thing is, my, my, I had an expectation. I thought that is what I'm going to do because the dream, because David said, yes, that's, that's where we're heading. And yet Jesus said, no, 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 you're so, you need so much training in communication. Communication, why do I need communication to make a movie? Why do I need communication to, to be with you? You know, there is just no context. The mind that... Yeah, where I came from, I had no context of what is what is really going to take for this. So, so basically, I think yeah, like David said, I was probably competent in some worldly skills, but I was very incompetent in in true communication, communication with with my brothers in a real way to open up and. 
and uh, be able to speak up. It was uh, very frightening for me. And um, so that was, that was one thing. So gradually, just over the years, I saw I was guided to so many different projects, some tech-related, some have absolutely nothing to do with any of this. So it's probably just traveling and speaking, cleaning, painting for a house, physical projects, absolutely everything. But, but you know, in my mind, it's, it's even hard for me to look back and summarize. So anyway, jumping back, this, this thing started to just dissolve in my mind because I, I, I have to say, I did get happier and happier. So whether I, in the end, make a movie or not is, is irrelevant. And it, it was really not what I came here for anymore. And, um, but I think the, the cue was, because everywhere I travel, I traveled a lot during those years. Everywhere I travel, I still mention to people if I, make, uh, if I meet a filmmaker, I still mention, like Soren, when, when I, when I um, Jenny and I went to Copenhagen, it was such a synchronicity because, because we got an invitation from, I think, Marianne in Aarhus, Denmark. And we always go where we're invited, always. But that particular incident, I just have this feeling, I want to go to Copenhagen, and I have no idea why. There was no invitation, absolutely none. So I just said, let's just be bold, just post on Facebook, does anybody want to invite us to Copenhagen? <laughs> <laughs> and you actually heard the other side of the story two days earlier, Soren there, saw the message and responded within five minutes and said, come. But he, he, was, he was very, um, he was into the course way back and then he was very in a um, closed down state, living on his own. And he ha had a little foundation there and the foundation is into environmental issues. So he came and he, he invited, he said, as long as you guys can talk about sustainability, and Jenny and I look at each other. Yeah, we can talk about sustainability. <laughs> we will talk about true sustainability. <laughs> <laughs> so that was our um, that was the one condition, and that's the retreat we did with the title "True Sustainability." And Soren later on said, "I didn't understand a word you said there." <laughs> But that was the retreat I met Soren, that's the retreat I met Svava. And our lives just changed completely. But basically I did mention to Soren after hearing that he was a documentary filmmaker. I mentioned, oh, you know, this project, we don't know when, we don't know whether it's gonna happen, but let's stay in touch. But actually um, six, seven months after that, this project suddenly came into awareness again, and it was completely orchestrated. Because all throughout the years, you know, occasionally this thought came up in my mind, Jesus, was my dream even real anymore? Are you really gonna make a movie anymore? What is going on? And Jesus just said to me once, he said, you just relax, it's already done. It's already done. So I thought, okay, then I will just wait and, and forget about it. So, yeah, then what happened was we had um, suddenly a lot of people just synchronistically came and wanted to be part of a project, and in particularly a movie project. That's, I think, how the whole thing got started, in my yeah. awareness. I remember that meeting. We were at La Casa, yeah. out there by the pool, and... And it was a meeting and talking, and I think that was my my part right there too. I was just saying over and over, well, it's not about the the movie as a product. It's it will be about just following guidance, and like with everything else, it won't be different from from other things. And so, you know, you as long as you don't get too wrapped up into 
the mindset of thinking you're doing a movie in the future and you just stay present with listen and follow, I said, it's, it's going to work out great. And, and it, but I felt there was such a synergy too because there was one person there that was saying, I can be the director. And another person, I think Soren, if he's the director, I'm, not, I'm out of this project. And, and uh, you know, all kinds of things swirling around there. But there was a real synergy, like something was coming. And uh, it was another listen, follow, forgiveness opportunity, really. A, a swirl of energy. And you felt that, too, I think, at that meeting. Like, yeah. it's, it's start, something's happening. Yeah, yeah. I mean, over, for, the, for those years before that point, it was really learning to be patient and also forget about the, the expectation and the goal anymore, knowing that it's really about this end goal of being following, just following is, is the goal itself. You know, it doesn't really matter about anything anymore. But when this synchronicity started to happen, I still got really surprised. I was like, wow, does that mean that this is the movie that's going to happen? Is your team ready, Jesus? Jesus like, yeah, I'm going to send you the team. You don't even need to go out to look for people. So he sent the people. And among them, there was one guy from Portugal. He actually is, he just won the best cinematographer, which is like the cameraman, the best cinematographer um, almost like an equivalent of Oscar in Portugal. So he is the most experienced and uh, um, established and acclaimed um, cinematographer in the film industry in Portugal. So how he got sent in was because his son came to the monastery to volunteer. And we, we, we knew of him and we thought he applied to come to the mystery school. And so we called him, and he said, yeah, yeah, I can come, and, and I can bring my father, who actually um, just marked the whole month of May to want to be a time of inward and quiet. He heard silence in his mind. So we thought, okay, great. Both Raphael and his father are coming. We have an amazing cinematographer. Then later on, we realized it wasn't this Raphael who applied. So it was just a complete um, coincidence. A mistake, but they came anyways. And Jesus sending him in from all angles, whether we know what's happening or not, <laughs> the team is being assembled. Yeah, and a and a translator because Raphael could do some, but uh, but his father spoke only Portuguese. So yeah. we ended up praying and and flying in a friend of ours, Teresa, uh, all the way from Portugal to to help with the translating. So it was a, a, quite an interesting team that got sent in. We, we didn't know what to expect. Yeah, and we didn't know who is doing to do what. We, we were on, the only one that was clear was this acclaimed camera person gonna, gonna be our cinematographer. That was the only one clear. And we asked Soren and he said he wants to focus on sound. And then um, the other guy who was gonna be a director pull out. Because originally I thought I was just a visionary for this project and I can be there in support emotionally. And then when the director pull out, um, everybody look at me as, okay, you're going to be the director now. <laughs> and I thought, I don't know what, what it means to be a director. You went to, she went to Google and typed in <laughs> director. <laughs> <laughs> I, typed, I typed, what does a director do in the movie? And then there is basically interviews, and basically everybody said, everything. <laughs> That's the answer. What a director do for a movie? Everything. So, so, and then at that point, I was still thinking, how can that be? Because I, I really, really, I'm going to do everything? And then from that point on, it was about you know, 10 days before, before the team gonna arrive, and then this, um, 
one uh, volunteer were, who was with me, and she said, I really feel inspired. We need to get started. We need to buy hard drives now because they take 10 days to arrive. If we don't buy anything when the team arrives, there's no equipment, no hard drive. And I said, okay, what do you order? What kind of hard drive? There's this, this. I don't know. I don't know. What kind of camera should we run? I don't know. I really... So it was so so much urgency at that point and so many decisions to make and there was clearly nobody else I can turn to. Sometimes you have to be pushed in that, in that position. There's nobody else. So I just have to say, okay then, it's you and I now. <laughs> and I'm just going to ask you and go with what I hear. And I, I oh, actually have no room I cannot afford to question what I hear anymore. You know, if I hear, I'm go forward with it, and then let's just let's let's get rolling. That's how it got started. And then when the team arrived, um, this yeah, this um, I I was so leaning on this cinematographer. You know, he is the most experienced. So I asked him for everything. Oh, what do you think? And on day one, he basically just said, you're the director, you tell me. I, I, I do whatever you say. I was like, it's almost like Mo, Mo, Mozart is saying, you just tell me the note, I'll write it for you. <laughs> it was like that shocking, and I was feeling, oh my God, I'm going to direct him. How embarrassing, you know, like this... <laughs> Because it's the upside down world versus listen and follow. You know, if you can see so clearly just from this that you have this world famous cinematographer coming in and then saying, You tell me you're the director. And she's just like thinking, Okay, Jesus, now it's you and I because I'm going to either follow you or look like a fool uh, to this award winning uh, cinematographer. And the other thing that's cool about it, you know, from my perspective, because I, I, we're doing a mystery school, which is people, how many, 20, 20 people, 20 people coming from all over the world for 30 days. I know Lisa, Emily have been doing, interviewing them, coaching them, counseling them for like a whole year just to get there, because they're like, oh, I can't come, I'm, I'm a paralyzed, I can't, and then I... So all of those 20 people who are coming for the mystery school have huge, miraculous backstories just to get there. And I am aware of a lot of these backstories. And some of you probably in the audience that were, were I'm not sure how many were there for that, for that first one. Nicolene is here. You were there. But there's big backstories with all the participants coming. And then all the staff and teachers there, I know all their backstories, how they were called out of the world, how they followed over months and years to go into their devotion, to even be there at the monastery at that particular time. And then Raphael, whose father is the world-famous cinematographer, there's a whole giant backstory on, on him. Not only wasn't he the Raphael you thought, but he was the Raphael that ended up bringing his father in. And he was over here in Europe uh, when we had another community down in Spain and uh, Jenny and I were both contacted by him because he was in Portugal and he was losing, losing the use of all of his five senses. He started to go blind and he started to go deaf and he started not being able to feel things or smell things. He literally started to lose all of his five senses and he didn't know what was happening. It's something he felt it could be something spiritual or, or whatever, but you know, what's the diagnosis for losing all five of your senses at once? You know, it's that'd be hard for any doctor to even diagnose. And then, basically, he was his parents were getting Acasio and his mother were getting very frightened because they think, oh my God, our son is dying. Um, he's he's shutting down. He's closing down. We can't reach him. He needs help, but a doctor can't help him, and, and so they cried out for help. Actually, we got these messages from Raphael, and he's like, uh, please help me. 
and everything. And I just prayed to Jesus, and Jesus said, just get him over to the monastery from Portugal over to Utah and get him out in rural Utah to the monastery and, and I'll, help, I'll take care of him. So it's like, okay, so we did, we got him out there and slowly when he was way out in, at this monastery, he began to, to get his, his sight back, his hearing. He couldn't even listen to or watch a TV show or a movie because it was too intense for his, his, his hearing and his sight. But Jesus nurtured him back. So what I'm saying, there's a whole backstory on, on each one of the people that are going to be on the team, that are going to be there at the mystery school, that are going to be teaching. There's like giant backstories, but it's very quantum. It's, it's like it's all for one purpose, which is listen and follow. That's the only unifying purpose behind all the backstories, whether it's losing your senses, whether it's I feel depressed, I don't know what my life's calling is, I need joy, I need love, I need to experience, you know, happiness. And they all have parables of how they all got there. Just like you all have uh, amazing backstories on how you seem to be here now. And some of you, you have shared those from the front row and from the audience. So this is like, it's, it's like a huge orchestration just for listen and follow, just for forgiveness, is the only th way I can even describe it. That's why, you know, when the original four asked Jesus the plan for the future, he said, I can't even tell you because it involves people you haven't met. It was the same, you know, now, you know, all the team met, but we didn't meet each other until much, much later on. So at the beginning, when I had the inspiration, there was no way to understand when and how it's going to happen. And if you look at the timeline, even symbolically, from when I thought I was so ready for listen and follow assignment to the point I was given, you know, I was given many other assignments, but not to the degree. This is purely just you and Jesus and absolutely nothing else. So this is, not only I had to learn, listen and follow, but I can talk a little bit more. In the end, it was listen, follow Jesus, and nothing else. The nothing else is a big learning part as well. So basically, that's from that point of willing, willing, ready, mind trained three months already, to, <laughs> to I was given an assignment just to hope to purely be taken by Jesus on a ride. It's um, six years. And so ba basically by the time we started, like David said, all of these people who came and some of the stories I, I, I knew a little bit, but we didn't really know anybody's full picture. We just okay, this is the team, you know. Later on, I find out Soren, he just, he was living in spiritual community. He was very spiritual from very early on, but there is one thing he just feel, he is very shy, and he, he closed down for 10 years before he came, living alone in his private apartment in Copenhagen, 10 years, locked in into some kind of deep anger and shame, and that's, that's how I met him, and when I met him, and then when I invited him. But at that point, all that I, because yesterday someone in the afternoon asked, what is the one, if, if you give me one, someone asked Emily, if you give me one pointer to start a community, what, what is that one pointer? And I thought it was a very good question, because that applies to, Anything, living, toge living together, leading a team together, um, collaborating on any project together, if, if, if there's one thing, then it is make sure we have the same goal. Because that goal, if it is not the same at, at upfront, all the reflections ongoing will be countless disagreements and conflicts as 
you know, on the surface, it looks like just specific problems, but it's all coming from not in agreement of the, the very goal. So, and I thought, you know, I, I really did not know these people, most of them who, who came, and I really did not know how to lead a team to make a movie, but I, there is one thing I do know, is by that point, I know that we have to have the same purpose. And I'm going to make sure everybody know that before they come. So I asked Soren, I said, yes, it is making a movie, but it is for healing. Are you up for it? It's most and foremost for healing. It's most and foremost for mind training. Are you up for it? Soren said, yes, absolutely. Everybody else said the same thing. And one more step that was in there, too, is like you would think you're moving in the direction now, teams being assembled, you're going to film a movie, and most people would say, well, one of the decisions that you would seem to need to make pretty early on is, is who you're going to film for the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and so Francis, a lot of us were talking, talking, and, and initially there was an idea that, that we would film Nicolene's here and the participants, the ones 20 people who are coming from all around the world, that uh, they will be there at the monastery, the film team will come together, they'll film the participants and capture all the healing and emotions and, and capture it all, and that'll be part of the documentary. No, that wasn't the plan at all, because as soon as they started to ask people to sign release forms, people were like, hell no, I'm not coming for a month of my life uh, to come for healing and bear my soul and pour everything out when I'm going through my dark night of the soul for you to what? Have a camera <laughs> up my nose uh, while I'm crying and mucus is coming out. You know, it's like, you want me to sign a, a, a release form to film? I what? I quit. I, they quit, right? It was like, no, 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 no. It's like Jesus saying, I got it. It's already done, but you humans. Yeah. Oh, you always think you know what everything's going to be. And so at every step of the way, it's like, yeah. so you're like saying, so I'm not going to be, they're not going to be the focus yeah. of the film. The he you knew it would be healing. Yeah. You knew it would be the same shared purpose. It you knew it would be listen, follow, and then Jesus flips the whole thing around. Yeah, I mean the thing, the reason is because the mystery school came in a year, uh, a year in the in the planning and preparation, and the movie only came in two months before. So the whole time when the mystery school is a complete separate inspiration and a big project, and it took a year to um, develop this relationship and trust with the twenty people around the world who were going to come. So there were a lot of interviews, there were a lot of um, steps with them by the, the teacher and the facilitators already. So when this project came in, it was clearly guided to be the same month, clearly. So it was very clear to me that that's what we're going to film, because this is the month we're going to have two projects at the same location. So the mystery school is going to be the backdrop that we're going to film for. But then um, the movie came so late, so by the time we say we're going to have a movie, that is like, oh, hell, break loose for everybody. What? No. No, 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 no. And I think a few people did, did uh, uh, what do you call, pull out from, you know, from, from the, the school before the school started, because we told everybody it's going to be a movie project. And again, I felt, okay, I don't know how to control the outcome, but one thing I know is I just need to clearly communicate and share, and then whatever happens, happens. So I told everybody, this is what's going to happen. If you have issue, call me, and then we can have a phone call with every participant before they arrived. And uh, I think a few people pull out. So there was, there was not only participants that pulled out, but but the, also among uh, everyone who had been working for 
the better part of a year to prepare for this, and then boom, we're doing a movie uh, inside of it. There was resistances, reactions, and so on. You know how it is when you, in your family, you, you have, hey, I got a great idea. Not everybody <laughs> always thinks that your great idea is such a great idea, and it's no different even with spiritual community or whatever, but it takes a trust to just say, like you were saying, it's just you and, and Jesus, and so you're just relying on, on Jesus and nothing else. Because just like the, the two in last night, you know, they had to basically, you notice like during the movie last night, they were always kind of looking around whether they could share food and looking at the people. They were looking at the audience. Now imagine you're making a film and usually filmmakers, almost all filmmakers in the world, have to come clear about who is the audience that I'm making the movie for. And Jesus is helping us be so intuitive that that, that question is gone. Oh, you're making it for your own mind healing here. <laughs> and you're not making it for a specific audience. That's hugely different. Imagine a for recording artist or a filmmaker, producer. That's like one of the major questions. Who are you making the film for? Who are you trying to reach? And Jesus is in there. Yeah, I know who. You're, you're trying to reach me. <laughs> you're trying to reach God <laughs> is what you're doing. But you see how different that is from the horizontal goals that a filmmaker might have or a singer. You know, it's pretty radical. You look at it. Yeah, and because there there was no um, end goal, there was n we don't know who we're making this for in terms of external audience. So it's purely for ourselves. Then we then because of that, we don't know the stories to tell either. We don't know you know what kind of theme, what is uh, to film. But so it's purely an inward journey. Um, so there was absolutely no script, no storylines. Just, okay, then today give me the prompts where to set the camera and who to film. Tomorrow, it's like now, now, now. So that was how the, the month unfolded. It turned out that um, we didn't really turn the camera on to the participants, even they all signed, whoever came did sign the release form. Where Jesus didn't really instruct us to turn the camera on them. All the camera got to turn on the movie team because we have so many healings and expressions <laughs> among ourselves just by doing the project. And kitchen team that was supporting the whole mystery school. So all the volunteers who are there doing the actual mind training, who are going through the issues with their relationships with each other, that's who um, the camera turned on in the end. And um, yeah, I think I think also with um, with the with the or initial um, purpose because I was telling everybody who came to the mystery school and to the movie team that. The purpose is healing. So when it became to be, at one point, became to be really almost like a decision point, do we do the movie or not? Because people are really against this idea. And I just started to pray, and I heard Jesus say, you're doing this for healing. So is all the movie team. So is all the participants who come. And so are all the facilitators. The purpose of absolutely every single one on this on, on site is for healing. There is no separate purpose, even if there is separate projects. And if you leave it to me, I can show you there is no conflict, as long as the purpose is the same. So I relaxed after I heard that. So I told everybody there is no separate purpose. We're all here for healing. Let's leave it to Jesus to guide. And that's how, how it got started. Yeah, and there's also... You, you might ask, you know, what are there any other backstories too with this? The, of course, there are. Like, for example, when I was traveling around the United States, Canada, and the world, I would basically just show up, and things like this, 
event were orchestrated amazing organizers, Course in Miracles teachers, Course Facilitator teachers, email list. Um, I've spoken in halls like this in, in South America, in different parts of the world with translators, uh, simultaneous translators. There's, all, there's a swirl of activity that goes into, I call it the quantum scene. You know, it's all, really it's just Jesus orchestrating time and space. And it seems like it's all these characters. Uh, even with the movie though, it's like when I would travel uh, back in the early days, I would just show up and let the spirit pour through me. And occasionally somebody would have one of these little Walkman kind of, or cassette Recorders. They put a little cassette recorder near me to capture whatever was happening. And the quality wasn't the greatest. Typically I was in like people's living rooms. The, they'd be sitting in there, they put the cassette recorder down, people would put their drinks on the coffee table. There's a lot going on. And then the dog, the big dog comes in and tail goes by, whoosh, just knocks the whole thing over. So people would listen to the cassette recording they would hear glasses hitting the floor, dogs barking. You know, talk about uh, no, no tech team. Oh no, we didn't have a tech team. Jesus was just saying, go out, have some fun, and just let me speak through you, and let, don't give any thought to anything. You know, whatever's happening, be not distracted by whatever's going on. And then people started showing up with video cameras and to film. Grainy, you know, this was where the early YouTube's, they'd be there. Can you, can you do the filming? Yeah, I got a, a camcorder. And they'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> and then we, I, I was like, well, it is a video, so let's, let's put, it put it up. And then people watch it. They're used to watching Eckert, Muji. <laughs> they're like, what the hell? Are they like on drugs or, or drunk? I mean, you know, can't they like hold the camera steady at least, you know? And it's real grainy, you know? It's like. So the beauty of it is with this, we should mention that there were donations that one of the people that was at the mystery school and that is pretty prominently in the film is also a benefactor. What do we call him? A uh, patron. A patron donating money because again now we're going to make what a, a regular motion picture that is such a high quality that it can be shown at a theater you know talk about instead of this to the grainy little ones now you need bigger cameras you need booms you need microphones you need all kinds of equipment and so there was an aspect donations come in francis goes shopping it wasn't like a, a movie Warehouse, yeah. rental, you can, uh, renting equipment, purchasing equipment, it's a, there's a lot that goes in. But even all that was just orchestrated. Like Jesus said, don't worry, it's already done. There's a lot of guidance that comes into the money, the renting, you know, all those things. So we're just trying to give you a full picture of when you just say yes, <laughs> then even to something like this, yeah. there's a lot that has to come in. Yeah, those things are really coming in very effortlessly. The money came in and by, you know, support. But it's not, even though every element is there, all the team's members are there, it's not easy. It, it's still, it's so much, you know, you're, you have to give into it. I remember we, we finally decided on the camera when the cinematographer from Portugal came. He said, this is the camera we should go for 4K, not even high definition. High definition is 1080, 1K. We get 4K, so four times the high definition. We got three of those cameras. It was really good. And we, we rented and bought one and rented the rest. And we got back. OK, how do we use it? He said, I don't know. I'm not, <laughs> He was so experienced that he doesn't operate cameras anymore. He just, his, his um, a, um, assistant does everything, set it all up to the perfection. He just come and have a look. So I was like, what other settings? I, I don't know. <laughs> so, we, so from the beginning, we, I realized I cannot rely on absolutely anything. And every, Jesus was like, I, I can tell you how to 
how to do this and who to ask, but don't look left and look right. You know, just just ask me. Ask me for for absolutely everything. So that's that's really how it started. And then I, it was very you know from the beginning I knew I didn't know anything. I knew that, and I was not shy to tell my team I didn't know anything. So I just know one thing: I know how to communicate. At that point, I know how to make sure that the team would go together with a clear mind together. Whether we our skills are good enough, whether we're going to produce anything, I have no idea. But one thing I know how to move together as one unit with a clear mind. How do we do that? That's what I learned for all these years of preparation. That we learned that okay, we come together to start. The project with a prayer, hold that, and every day, you know, I I will be listening and follow, listening and write down the the prompts and communicate, and then I would expect at the beginning a lot of thoughts and frustrations and emotions. I I didn't know what they would be, but I I knew they would be. So it was really just a matter of fact. Let's dedicate time. Let's dedicate. Space for that—that's the priority of the team. You know, you don't normally see the Hollywood movie studio do that. Like, let's let's have a month of shooting time and spend half of the day every day clear the mind, <laughs> and then see whether we get anything done for the rest of the day. But that was—I thought that's the one thing I, I I know how to do, and that's the one thing that's the only thing I know how to do. So let's do that. And that makes the point that. During those six years, when Frances first came from Australia, she was okay. Rick, let's have let's do a movie. There's no cameras, there's no microphone, and she didn't realize that she needed to go through like another five or six years of of teach and learn and listen and follow. Because if if you're put in the director position for making a movie, a director must lead.、Uh, that that is one of the basics. Of what a director does on the set is is leadership, and so this is a perfect example of how the one who is supposed to be leading has never led a film team before. So this puts it what all on listen and follow, you see, and that's why even in our community when people are given different positions of leadership, we know. That it is impossible to lead unless you can be led. You see, it'll blow up in your face if you try to be a leader of people, but you're not tuned in to the Holy Spirit. It's going to blow up. There'll be reactions, resistances. Who are you to tell me what to do? There has to be a sense of totally being led. To even be used in a position of leadership, you know, I mean, you've got examples in Europe of those who were in leadership that were not led. Hitler, it didn't go too well.、Uh, he was a leader who was not following, and 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 we have Nazi camps and. Killing and lots of things that go on. If the ego is your leader, <laughs> and you're following that, that's a very different leadership than being led by spirit, and then using that mechanism. In the end, it will wash away the whole idea of leader follower, because Jesus is like, you know, everyone is perfectly equal. Don't don't go ahead. I may not follow. Don't stay behind me. I may not lead. Walk beside me and hold my hand on the self-same road, and the equality leads to the experience of forgiveness. But in this particular case, this is like such an extreme example, because you didn't have really past learning、uh, of a director or filmmaking to fall back on. And even when you were tempted to turn and hear or there for advice, or your cinematographer says, "I don't know how to how to set." A, a camera, you know, that was another assumption. Like, wow, you're a world-class cinematographer, and now you just sit back and watch. Yeah, that's what they pay me to do. I don't know 
how to run the camera anymore, you know. And then, Francis, again, back, back, Jesus and nothing else. You know, that's, that really is such a good example of how this, this works. And that's also why I think, you know, we, we talked about no private thoughts and no people pleasing. This whole exercise was an exercise of, of having almost like channeling a film without trying to please others, without looking to others for approval. And also, to be a really good communicator, which you would practice, you know, you can't really hold on to private thoughts. Because if you are analyzing the motives of others or wondering what's going on here and there, you can be intuitive only to let the Spirit speak through you, but not for any other reason. Yeah, because my team, um, they're pretty, all pretty, in different ways, pretty strong in, in, in their own ways. And they all have an idea what the movie should be. So I'm here thinking I really don't know. And everybody seemed to have ideas every single day. And at the beginning, I listened and listened. And at one point, it felt, no, I'm not listening to any of the opinions anymore. I'm listening to this, and my role is to tell you, is to hear and tell, not this way. And it was, that was a big, a big step up, because, because when I do that, I, was, I, I, you know, I had to face a lot of projections, and a lot of upsets, and a lot of disappointments. My, I have really good idea, but you, you hurt me. You don't want to hear me. You know that was a lot. But also, given the time that was really tight, we don't have time, and I have to prioritize. And that lesson is is the lesson of listen and follow. But also be so strong. I think that's what during the two years of of this project, if the six years before that was just preparing for me to be ready to take a project, then this two years in the making is to shift from be willing to listen and follow to the point of, you know, strong in be listen and follow only one voice, not anything else. Because that's the, the, the time I would say that was tempted so tempted because inside there is this still the desire to be told by people, by the experienced ones, tell me. I think there must be still either laziness or in confidence to, to receive everything. Everything. But that was my assignment, receive everything. So from that point, if I jump till the end, also I want to talk a little bit about collaboration, because this project, I really did not do anything. If, if I have, if this is, a, there is a moral in this story, I really wanted it to be about how little, how little I have done anything throughout the whole thing. I waited for six years, you know, just be patient, learn the patience, and be just, be ready, and be ready. And then during these two years, filming one month and then the rest of the time just editing. I was really, um, all, my, all my job was just to listen and be there to speak up what I hear and not hear anything else. That's it. And everybody else was sent to collaborate. So the first day of the mystery school, the mystery school happened, all the team arrived, all the equipment were there, and David got this strong prompt to invite Neda to come to the mystery school for two, two weeks. And Neda came, she just wrote this beautiful song, and then she played at the opening of the mystery school. And after the song, I didn't hear it because I, I, I was absent in that session. And I came back to the house. Everybody said, you have a name. You have a name for your movie. That song is the name of your movie. Take me home. So the name was given to me on day one. I didn't come up with it. The theme song was given to, to, to me by, by Jesus through Neda. So all those elements 
came in through be open to collaborate in such a big dance, and my little part is is so small, and yet it my part is for me in a way, and everybody's part is for me as well. But also, there is an internal journey going on for everybody that is、um, part of it. That's like a huge example because I know a lot of you, as you've listened to us and you, as we've gone through this week, you know, you probably are having some of those thoughts like, "Wow, if I say just yes, lead me, guide me, what will be asked of me? What are you going to have me do?" And in the end, the miracle is is collaborative, but the miracle. Is ultimately that you start to realize that you aren't the doer, you aren't the body, you aren't the one. You know how much stress and anxiety we have over feeling like we are the doer. I have to do this. I have to do this or else. If I don't do this, I'll let people down. I can't face that. I'll just be guilty. I want to crawl in a hole. I can't face that. The guilt is always coming from the identification with the timeline and with the body, with the doer. And what Frances is sharing is, she not only was given the dream and the inspiration for the movie. Jesus saying, "I'll take care of it," but it took a lot of patience to w- even forget about it and have Jesus bring it back in. But even during this process, you're saying, "I did so little," because that was what all the mind training was for: was to just listen and follow, and don't identify with the doer. So in the end, you can see. That should be another incentive to listen and follow, because you, he, Jesus says in the course, it cannot be difficult to do the task that Christ has appointed you to do, for it is He who does it. Oh my gosh, it is He who does it. In the end, it's Christ, J.C. Central, that orchestrates everything. It's Christ that seems to be using all the symbols, but the you that seems to have the weight and the burden, the the heavy shoulders. That's what's getting undone: is the belief that you're that person that has to do things. Just think of all the strain that we experience and the stress of feeling we have to do things. And think of all the guilt of believing we've done the wrong things or we've done things. That that are not good, and somehow there's some kind of penalty or whatever, or a feeling of wrongness for the things we've done. There was a point in my life too where Jesus said, "You have never ever done anything wrong," and I was like, "What?" And he said, "And you have never ever done anything right either." <laughs> I was shocked with the first one, but the second one was like, "Think about it for a minute. You've never done anything wrong, and you've never done anything right, because it's been your identification with the body and with the person that was the done wrong, done right. That's really deep, but that's where he's lifting us to above the battleground. Is not a place of doing. It's a. It's a. Let me see the world differently. Let me see the world differently, and that's with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. So this is, again, this is like talk about a miracle case study. This is like a miracle case study, just filled with examples. That in the end, I had to keep praying and praying and tuning in. But it just was—it was light, and that's the way I feel with, with the travels and the talks and the gatherings and all the stuff over the last thirty years. I can't really say it cost me anything because it—it's been a joy actually, and that's, you know, I got that early on in my life when one time when I was out driving back I think in the in the nineteen eighties late eighties, and I was looking and there was a car in front of me, with a bumper sticker. And so I get close as I can, so I can read the bumper sticker because I'm getting so many messages from the bumper sticker. And I'm used to seeing in the old days. I was used to seeing bumper stickers, "Life's a bitch," and then you die. 
Uh, but this time I get close to see the bumper sticker and it says, life's a joy and then you ascend. And I'm like, oh my God, that's my life philosophy on a bumper sticker. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to forget that. And that's what we mean by you are not the doer. When you give way to this glorious miracle, it's like everything is mystical. Everyone's playing their part perfectly. And you're like watching this thing, thinking, thank you for allowing me to behold the ease, the divine ease of it's you're doing it. I'm, I'm being done through by the Spirit. And what a great way to really, I mean, really experience that during the, the filming of this movie. Yeah, because I, you know, I, uh, in the last few days, I, I talked with some of you and I, I do notice and connect with this theme of unworthiness and feeling like there's, there's a feeling I'm not good enough, I'm not, I don't have what it takes somehow to do this. And I, I feel very, relate, re, I relate to this at the beginning especially because I, I think even a couple of years um, after I joined the community, there was a reading I did um, recommended by a friend and this, this reader is a Course in Miracle psychic. So he, <laughs> he, he uses Course language, understands, but he gives you a reading about your you know, ego. And <laughs> so I, <laughs> I just went, I can't remember the, the reading, but I did say, ask him at the end, I said, I feel so unworthy and weak. Like, how, how, what do I need to do to feel strong and strength and and he just paused for the longest time but then at the end he said you have no hope that's the end <laughs> and I was like what because the the, the question it was really um, what do I need to do to because I am ready you know I'm so willing and so eager to heal and to feel this worthiness but when he said you have you you have no hope that was how I learned and I was like wow somehow that ended me to to keep searching for for that actually and for years after I always remember what he said but what I took from that was maybe there was no hope in this world because I really never became more confident in this world. I didn't feel ever, you know. I, I got it. I improved myself to the degree that I feel good about myself now. There was no sense of <laughs> self-improvement. You're laughing. So I'm laughing because I'm thinking <laughs> at that moment, you have no hope. That sounds like that was the end of your belief in self-improvement. Yeah. Right there. Like, okay then. <laughs> You're going to have to show me <laughs> yeah. internally. It was so shocking that I didn't even know how to move forward from that point in my mind, mentally, because I was also thinking. And so it was it's, it's some kind of stop was brought. But right now I can laugh about it because right now I feel after this, this project, it was a clear feeling that, you know, with myself, I can do nothing but with him, you know, Everything is possible, and I don't need to feel. I don't need to feel strong of myself. Actually, I feel good that I don't feel strong on my own. Somehow, I, I started to turn around. Like, yeah, I don't feel, and I'm I'm happy with that now because I want to rely on him always. You know, after this, especially after this ex, um, experience, it's not so much the fact that. A movie got made. It proved anything. It's more the internal journey that I had finished for the last two and a half years taught me something. This is the process that I I take away not an end product, but I take away this this internal journey that I know that Jesus is with me, and I know I can just ask, and that's all I need to do. That was reinforced day in and day out for two years, two and a half years. And that habit was ingrained now in my mind. And that is really the only gift I walk away. 
Because someone asked me, are you going to make a second movie? I said, I'm in the same space. I still don't know how to make a movie. I have no improvement after a movie project. I have a little bit of improvement in this certainty that I can hear Jesus and I will ask him. That is, that's the, the certainty I, I gained. So yeah. I also feel like I'm, I'm thinking of those years during the six years of communication and mind training. Uh, there was a point, you know, we, have, we work with so many people all over the world, so it's kind of like a, a global ministry with centers here and centers there and people doing this and leading this and this. And, and I was quite active with a lot of it. But, you know, uh, Jesus worked with the apostles and Jesus was, was pretty active in the upper room and all the meetings with the apostles and everything. But remember those scenes from 2,000 years ago where they would kind of be wandering out toward the hills and everything and Jesus would say to the apostles, uh, I'm going off to pray now, and I'm leaving you. Uh, so watch your minds, because I'm, I'm going off to commune with the Father. So I've had that, there was a time during those six years where, where I had been so active and working, and working so closely with so many people, and I, I felt that Jesus was saying, now just step back and just commune. Just go into the stillness and, and commune, but don't, you don't need to be so uh, seemingly active and interactive. And then uh, Jesus said, Francis will lead the ministry. That was in those six years too. Well, that brought up, that's another thing, you know. And then there was lots of reactions and everything. But Francis, strength has not been the problem because when Francis gives herself over to spirit, the spirit is very uncompromising. The spirit has le a lot of confidence and strength, and it just came through. And I remember it took a little while for you. That was another letting go and getting out of the way. But then it just would come through. She would have meetings with people. Very matter of fact, she could just be very direct with people because the spirit was, was coming through her. That was very helpful for me, too, because that was the time I was to really step back and then, and not, of course, there was just like with the movie team, there was some reflections. One of our friends said, came out and said, Francis is like a little Chinese general. <laughs> now, now, that is not actually a description of weakness when you get called a, ch a Chinese general. Uh, but this was how, when the spirit comes through you, it's like, let your yay be yay, your nay be nay. It's not kind of wishy-washy and, oh, maybe, and I don't know if we can do this. It's just boom, 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 boom. Okay, next meeting. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, next meeting. Boom, boom, boom. This is what I was doing for years in all my meetings, you know, direct, direct. Okay, next meeting. You know, I'm dying. I'm going to kill myself. Here's, here's the guidance. Okay, next meeting. You know. <laughs> I mean, it's so, it's so strong. I mean, I remember one time I was in, in Pennsylvania and I'm driving through Pennsylvania and one of, one of the students is calling and the cell phone and, and I'm going there, reception, what is it, what is it? I'm, I'm, I'm in hell, I'm going through my dark night of the soul. I'm, I'm dying here, I'm, I'm, I'm suicidal, I'm suicidal, I think I'm going to kill my... Oh, well. <laughs> I mean, you know, Jesus is in charge here. I, this is not personal at all. And then I go drive a little bit further. I got cell reception again. Phone ring. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I could kill myself. And I'm sorry, I'm listening and listening. Oh, well. You, know, you, you start to realize it's the spirits in charge. And, and you're not doing anything, it's just not personal. You're there to offer your heart. You're there to let the Spirit pour through you and offer all the love and, and joy and acceptance of it is, but you have no control over the outcomes. Not suicides, not following, not following, you know. It's, you, you start to realize it's all for your mind. It's all one lesson for you to be peaceful, to be still. You know, that's the whole lesson of everything. There aren't separate purposes. 
So when Francis is saying, you know, I, I have no desire to be powerful, it's also with the th sense of, I have a desire, my full desire is to listen and follow. And, and to be uncompromising in listening and following, not, not to argue back with the, with the guidance, not to, to be wishy-washy and when tell so-and-so this, not to go, hmm, I don't want to say that. You know, just, just deliver the message. You know, oftentimes that's the way the spirit is. So it's, it's good because what you're really talking about is true strength, strength of of the spirit, following the spirit. It's not a personal kind of strength. Not at all, really. And when we start to, to be following Jesus in a very uncompromising way, um, I, th I think it is inevitable we, we face a lot of the seeming um, disagreement and conflict. They seem to be external, only because they're reflecting of an internal uncertainty. And I definitely see that of myself because, you know, looking back, I feel it is very clear from the, when I started the project till when I ended the project, at the beginning, how much I still want to listen to external sources and do not feel I can hear from within. And, and the external definitely reflects back. You, know, you can imagine for someone like Soren who invited me to do a sustainability talk, and the next time we saw each other, he came to make a movie. You know, though we did say healing was the goal, but he came to make a movie. And then there's, listen to me. What? Listen to you who don't know anything? <laughs> we should position the camera here. Focus on your audio. Let me handle the camera. Oh, you, no, that's, that's, that's a constant, you know. But to me, I feel like I see that external reflections really is only pointing to an internal conflicts. It's, they're not going to be there forever when I become more and more certain. And, uh, and that is definitely my experience because, because I did practice this you know, even yesterday some people talk, yeah, it's easy to, to, to share no private thoughts with community because you have the shared agreement. Yes, that's very true. That's why we do encourage um, you start there. Start with someone that have the shared agreement, have the shared purpose, have the shared context, and we feel safe with, with each other because we're doing it for ourselves our mind cannot be too frightened to open up. You know, we can't open up when we're in a state of fear. So it is definitely the case I, I spent years to practice this, to learn to open up and know I'm safe in the safe community. Then when the team came, they still, they're all still very devoted and have a little less context. So it takes a lot for me to to relay the context, to talk, and to be very clear, and to speak up. And that is definitely a lesson. When you work for Jesus, you need to speak up. You cannot, there is no room. When you lead something, you, there is no room to be a victim. I cannot point at my team to say, someone, someone is, no, no, there is no room. It's all me. It's all me. Because it's my, am I clear? Did I say that? You know, it's all come back to it. There is no room to be a victim. That's a, a wash away from pointing fingers to anything. If I see anything, I need to check, I need to pray and listen and deliver. So it's very clear. And then after these this years, a uh, couple of years of leading my team, Soren actually from just came for one month only, and then he's going to go back and continue his life. He's, he came back and stayed. You can see he, he's part of, of, of the community now. So after these two years, then finally, many, many times in the process, I ask whether, because we have the funds, we can outsource any element of the movie to a professional. You know, we can give a professional musician to do the score. Uh, which is the music. We can give a professional person to do uh, something. And Jesus always says no. No. It's 
all for the ones he bring over for the sole purpose of, of mind training. So everything was done in house by amateurs through the purpose of collaboration and mind training all throughout to music, to everything. Until the very last month, then I was given two studios to do the final color balancing and the sound balancing, which we do not have the equipment to do anymore. And that, to me, it was a one step further to actually be so clear with studio, Hollywood studios who have absolutely no context of this work at all. And for me, clearly, I don't know what I'm talking about. And they are the ones who are professional, who make professional movies, who are the professional studios. And for me to come direct them, that was another step up. And that's where the final lesson that with Jesus, I don't need to refer to any external. And that was so mind-blowing to me because before that point, I still have this fantasy. We are amateurs, and by the point I can give it to professionals, everything will be done. It was so wonderful. It's going to be easy. Money can buy it. It's going to be easy. I will be able to sit back and relax. That is a huge mind opener. By that time, myself and my team have gone through years of mind training. When I started to communicate with the, the professional studios, I realized that underneath their work, there is no inspiration. So it was going through the motions, day in and day out. You can imagine, you know, this is a world where a lot of people don't really know how to find their spark in every moment. So they, they accept a compromise, and the compromise is I can live most of the time just in comfort and going through the motions. Most of the time it's boring and it's not so happy, but maybe there's some good days. I will be on holiday for two weeks every year. I will be having fa family uh, Christmas dinner. And they're professionals, so professionals paid you receive a salary for your skills for your abilities for what you do you don't necessarily have done a lot of emotional healing but you can go and do a competent job and get paid a salary for it and so the, like that's a huge step in the sense of of thinking okay I've, it's come this far now the professionals have got it, and they get paid, so of course they'll do a great job, and yet it almost like that came back. Also, I was thinking of, of we don't want to skip over the editing, because how much footage, how many hours of footage? 300 hours. 300 hours of footage has to come down to one hour and 20 minutes. It's like, it's like uh, Michelangelo uh, or, you know, it's like, uh, or imagine, you know, the statue of David in, in Rome, you know, it starts off what? As a block of marble. And then takes a lot of taking away. You have to take away a lot of marble before you have this beautiful marble statue. In one sense, Francis, again, is not a filmmaker, but it's one thing just to make it through the the, the team, the issues, the resistances, the tech issues, and, and shooting all this footage, 300 hours of footage, and then begins the cutting away. What's the movie about? What will emerge? What, what, is to, what story is to be told? What, what's to come? That was a huge listen and follow thing just there, even before you go to the professionals. And that was a long phase, actually, a very long phase. Two years of, of editing, uh, Soren helping out, different ones. Uh, Peter, you know, there's a whole team. A lot of listen and follow there. And then this part with the professionals is almost like, whew, once you make it through the editing, you think, now I'm home free. No. Soren actually, um, after the project, because he always planned to do that's it. To, uh, after the one month of shooting, his part was done. So he went back home to Copenhagen 
And then we, we feel so connected through the months, like it feels like inseparable anymore. And then Soren said to me, I'll come back to Mexico to help you editing. And he came back two months later with a finished movie. He, 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 he edited it himself and because he is a filmmaker. And he brought the movie, and I watched it, and I said, no. <laughs> and that was the beginning of our next phase of collaboration. <laughs> that, but that, you did a pretty good job. You were like, you took instructions, the sound guy, no, you're the sound guy. You put the camera, no, you're the sound guy. You're the sound guy, you're the sound guy, you're the sound guy. 300 hours of footage, off goes Soren. I'm more than the sound guy. <laughs> I am a great documentary filmmaker. I'll just make my own film. <laughs> Francis is, no. <laughs> so it's like undoing the self-concept. Undoing, washing, rinsing, rinsing, rinsing. Because it, it's like, in the end, we're saying, Jesus, you lead the way. Jesus, it's your movie. Jesus, it's your ministry. Jesus, it's your everything. Why is it Jesus' is everything? Well, because he was the first one to complete his part in the atonement. He was the first one to realize who he was. And then, what does it say in the Course? He was put in charge of the plan of atonement. That's why everything is under Jesus' control. We always talk about Christ's control. That's our great prayer every day. Let me be under Christ's control. Let me be guided. Let me be led. Because wouldn't you want the one who's made it through the keyhole and escaped time and space to be the one that's leading you? Or do you want to just speculate? <laughs> you know. So this is a, a really good example about how even with the editing, then with the professionals, you were paying, you might mention like the colorization in, yeah. in Mexico, how that whole thing went. Well, first of all, to reach that point, you know, was so, was, yeah, it was just not easy, but it, it was very, very rewarding, you know. Sora and I have been editing you know, bounce back and forth. We have two systems in two different houses, so we, we send files. The files are huge, humongous. We have this big hard drive, stationary hard drive. We send our file back and forth through a code file, very small. And then we can open it up in each computer when we change something. But when, by the point we, we're going to take it to Portugal, to the professional studio, we never take the file offline. Ever. So they have never left our hard drive on our own computer before. But I'm now going to take it off into a small hard drive that I can travel with and fly over to Portugal. So I thought, that let's just try it. We, f we finally reached that point that the movie is logged in, logged in. And then let's just take it offline. And when we take it offline, that was hell because we couldn't open the file anymore. Yeah, when we reached that point, we took it offline and we started to try it back and forth. We could not open the file. At first it was part of the file couldn't open and then more and more and the whole thing. Neither of us could open the file anymore. And I'm sure that brought up the belief in loss. Like, we were like... Don't tell me we went through all that <laughs> <laughs> and we've lost the file. <laughs> and you know, I know G, uh, G, David actually all throughout the process has been keep saying it's not about the product, it's not pro about the product. And that point, it was like maybe it's really not about the product. <laughs> 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 maybe it is literal. <laughs> so, so basically, um, Soren sent the file because we were working on Apple system, so we sent it to Apple technician who developed the software and just to analyze. They said, give us three days. We're going to analyze the file and see how to revive it. And during the three days, we got nothing to do because we, we, we were finished. And Soren just said the file structure that we're working on um, 
were very complicated, layers on layers on layers and layers. He said, it's just like my mind, it's so messy. And he said, let me clean it up. Let's, let me just, you know, it's lost, but I, you know, as a follow-up, I just clean up the file anyways in his hard drive. So he did clean up. And then Apple came back after three days saying it's corrupted. It's not reversible or um, revivable. Sorry, guys, it's done. And, and then after they announced it, the file came back after Soren cleaned it up. <laughs> we have no idea what was the problem and how the solution happened, except that he just c decided to clean his mind and <laughs> As a symbol, clean on the screen, like what he perceived as still messy. That was that's all we did. So, finally, see Jesus probably was having fun too. <laughs> like, what well, you guys are doing so good. Why don't we try to undo the belief in loss here? Yeah. I'll just we'll throw some scenes on in there, and it will seem like you've lost everything. Now let's throw in the word corrupted. It's corrupted. <laughs> Ir it, it's irreversible, can't bring it back. And Jesus is like, now we can really have some fun and forgive the belief, the belief in loss for once and forever so you don't have to replay this one over. But you can see how different it is from how it looks in the world. Like, oh my gosh, I, I put my heart into this and this is the, everything I've worked for and now it's corrupted, it's irreversible, and yet... From the perspective of listen and follow, it's, it goes on. Like, Jesus is like, oh, this is fantastic. We can really undo that wedged in belief in loss down in the unconscious. This will flush it up. I bet it did, you know. I mean, I'm sure your emotions during that time. And I, because it was Sora and I, we have also the team who got involved in Utah. They, they were in Utah. I had to call them to say to the whole team, our file is. It's gone. <laughs> that was that's that's the update. <laughs> yeah, but also when the file came back, you know, it was so close to the time I travel. I already we already bought the ticket way before, and when I opened the file once, I just thought put it on the hard drive. I don't I don't want to touch it anymore. You can imagine when I flew take when I was on the flight to Portugal how. I just thought, I don't know whether they can open this thing. I would fly all the way over with something I just, I don't want to touch anymore. And I would go there and they would see whether they can open. And I have just no idea what's going to happen. A professional studio we just hired. And the Mexico team too, it's like you signed a contract. Was it for finalizing and sound, yes. finalizing the sound? So again, this was like, okay, we made it this far. We've got our file. We'll pay for the finalizing of the sound and this and this, and these are the experts. And then, yet it's still all under the direction of spirit. So even with professionals, they can come in. You know, it's kind of like our movie Next, when the military, the FBI was pretty much saying, Bravo, come in here, and we'll do this and this and this. And he's like, please, just do exactly as I say, and I'll save your life. You know, that's what... That's what this is in our mind, is Jesus is saying, please just do exactly as I say and I'll save your life. So that yeah. same scene plays out in numerous ways, yeah. in Portugal, but also in Mexico, because in your mind you said, well, I've, I've signed a contract, a very big contract. They're supposed to do all these things, provide all these things, but as Francis goes into the meetings, you know, when she's with her team, she's just very direct and this, do this and this. When you're working with professionals, it can seem a bit more like the I know mind. Like, that's why they pay me the big bucks. Yep. Because I've got the good ideas. And that's why I'm the professional and you're the amateur. Yeah. Let <laughs> me tell you what to do. Let me tell you what to do. And so that played yeah. out in Mexico. Yeah. We signed two, two studios, one in Mexico, one in Portugal. Because at that time, I didn't know where I, would, I was going to be. So we, it just happened simultaneously. And then, uh, yeah, the, the Mexico one was, it, I will go into it a little bit further, finish this one with Portugal. So basically, I landed in Portugal and gave them the file. 
and they say, we, we have other projects, so we'll wait until next week. So in the, in the meantime, you have the weekend. You can just relax. And the, throughout the weekend, I just thought, I, I don't know they can open it or not. So Monday morning, I walk into the studio and I see the movie on the screen laid out. I was like, thank God. And they just basically told me everything is okay now. And so I thought, wow, what a relief. So basically, that, that time in Portugal was, was very good in that they're very professional, but it's still like a a little bit of fight of who is making the decision here because they're the expert. We know how the color should look like. And JP and I who were there, we were like, no, we have a vision. The color is this way. No, 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 that's not how it is. It's this way. No. Okay, can you, can you please just listen to me because I have a vision for this movie. Of course, you're the director, of course, of course, but it was like a, a struggle every single way. But in the end, it was a good collaboration, very professional. Then I came back to Mexico. It was, oh my, Mexico started to sound, like David said, they, they signed a contract and I have a deadline because I was going to Japan. I, had, I only had two months there. And, um, and then they start, yeah, yeah, we, we will deliver this first phase at this date and by this date oh can we delay can we delay 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 and by the time i said no actually no not anymore and can i ask what's the reason oh because i, I think i want to go have a holiday i said but we signed a contract we have a date didn't you work toward that date it's gonna be fine francis it's going to be fine. So it, it was like, basically, I have to be so firm. I was so frustrated every time I left. And David just came back and said, just say what you mean to them. You know, be direct. And I said, but... We had a meeting there at the temple where when things started to get frustrating with this, these people who they were getting paid and they were not following the contract, following instructions... When Frances started to get frustrated, she would, she would take it out on J.P., uh, who helped with the sound. She, you know, she did, and J.P. and, and no, then J.P. Was, was driving me was to the driving. meeting back and forth because it's an hour drive to the meeting and an hour back. So on the way, I'm like, they're not doing this, they're not doing this. They're... So he's got an ear for every time he drives me. Yeah. <laughs> and so when we're having a morning meeting at the temple... JP's like, yeah, I'm really getting an earful uh, on, on these drives. Because uh, Francis says, they're not doing this, 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 this. Meanwhile, Svava's re- recording her first album, and she's using a professional studio in Guadalajara, in Mexico, too. And they're like, oh, we don't know about this and this, and we're not sure about this and this. And so I was getting an earful from uh, Svava about... <laughs> <laughs> these professionals that are not doing their jobs. So when we have our morning breakfast meeting, I was just like, listen, Francis, Spava, <laughs> you're, you're paying these professionals a lot of money. You are the customer. <laughs> you are paying them, and you have a vision. You have a vision for this music that comes from spirit and this, this movie that's coming from spirit, and they're the ones... You know, you're like the client. You know, they're the ones that are that are you're paying them. So you need to tell them exactly what it is that you're being guided. You you can't think of them as professionals. You know, this is for Jesus. This is for the whole universe. You can't think of it in that horizontal kind of way. So it's like Francis, you're going to have to be really direct with. Here's the contract, here's what's the deliverables, the things that I've been promised, the time frame and everything. She's teaching, she's going off to Japan, she's doing a, trips like this. This is a precise little time that she's available to, to do this. This isn't just, oh yeah, I can catch you later, you know. Well, she's going to be in Japan after this thing. And then the same with Svava, she, she just wrote out this email, very clear, very direct and, and, I, and then she read me the email, and she said, can I send this? 
I said, of course you can send this. This is exactly what you're feeling. This is exactly what your guidance is. So it was really, we talked about last night, it was really true empathy. It was just, just being in non-compromised true empathy. Like, what are the instructions? Just follow the instructions and don't get into people-pleasing just because you believe they're professionals and they should know better. You know, that's not the case. That's not really the lesson. And then uh, we didn't, you also had to let go of the outcomes. Fava had to let go of the outcome of, of a professionally produced uh, album. And you had to let go of the out, outcome of thinking that they would be able to, to do their job. What was it with sound? Yeah. Yeah, because also I feel like the, the quality of, of the work, just I couldn't believe, th is this really professional? How can the quality be this? Be this? There is no care, there is no inspiration, there is no quality. It almost just reflects a confused mind when I receive. It was mistakes everywhere, it was typos everywhere. And I was like, oh my God. So I have to basically give them a talk about paying attention to what you're doing. And, and I have to, every time I, I, then I go there, they started to like avoid because, and I said, let's just sit down. Oh, why, why do we need to talk? I said, I just want to talk about the quality. I want to talk about the integrity. And it was very, very hard for, for both because I still believe they must know what they're doing. And Jesus said, I'm directing you and you can trust me. This is where quality comes from. Quality is in a clear mind. The ones who has a peace of mind delivers quality because there is, there is care, there is inspiration, there is clarity. The ones who know the skills but there's no inspiration is confusing. So don't, don't refer to confusion. Come back to clarity. So, con so continuously, I, that's what I was, that w w you know, in my communication, I was missing my team because I thought, well, that was more potato to talk to my team. They were so, so supportive of me. And here is like, you can't really talk about mind training. You can't talk about forgiveness. Definitely not Jesus. But let's talk about integrity. Let's talk about honesty. Let's talk about quality. Let's talk about what we have, have agreed on, and even just that, it, it takes a lot of communication. And um, yeah, but also throughout that last phase, there, there was the listen and follow just continued on, continued on. And um, yeah, I, there was just so many, so many examples. At the very end, you know, we made it, made it, made it, there was a big event um, which is going to the Dolby studio to balance all the sound in that Dolby studio. And that's the most expensive process. So the sound engineer pushed it all the way to, if that is done, that's done. No more adjustments, that's locked in. So that's the last step. So the last step was pushed and pushed and pushed until two days before I fly to Japan. So I said, will you leave me no time if... If there's anything happen after that, I cannot make any change anymore. And he said, oh, not, nothing should change. That's good. That's, that's the end. So we went to the Dolby, and supposedly it's just very quick run-through because they charge by the hour. So we did a quick run-through, and the sound is completely out of sync. So the dialogue and the mouth, and so we, we spent long days correcting the sync, and a very, very long day, and it came back. I was so tired, and I, I said to JP, I said, I'm, I'm so tired, and I'm flying in two days. I just I do not have it in me anymore to check one more time, but I think this is our final product. I should have a look, you know, and we take it from the studio. I should have a final look to, to know this is our final product. So I said, will you be able to help me do a final run tonight? And he was just as tired, but he said, yes, I'll do a final run. So we went, and then by about 10 o'clock, I said, just give me, you know, give me a good or not good. Even if it is good, just let me know anyways, because I, I just want to know. So by the end of the night, he gave me a thumb up. So I thought, what does that mean? 
thumb up. I said, is that, so that means it's all good. And he said, well, you might not want to hear this. It's a little out of sync. I said, how? We, we saw everything on big screen. How can it be out of sync? He said, it's so subtle that you might be able to live with it. But I, I tell you, I think, because he's a musician, so he's very sharp. He said, I think it is one frame out of sync, which is a 25th of one second out of sync. So I, I, I watched it, and I watched it, and I watched it, and I was like, I, I, I can't tell, but I don't know. I can live with this. So I said, I'm going to go to bed. And then the next morning at 5, I was praying. I said, Jesus, you know, if it is your will to have it out of sync, that's it. If it is not your will, you tell me, because I have no, I, I don't even have the eyes to judge anymore. And then he woke me at 5. He said, go to Final Cut, which is a program, and use auto sync to find out. And I was like, auto sync? I didn't even know. There is an auto-sync function after two years of editing. <laughs> <laughs> auto-sync, really? I said, but how? I don't know how to, I, haven't, I don't know, the, how do I find how to use auto-sync? He said, I'll show you. So he showed in my mind literally what to do, which button to click. And then I flip out of bed, go to the computer, open my program, checked auto-sync. It was one frame out of sync. JP was right. And then, then I can truly relax because the machine and, and Jesus all told me the same thing. And I was just like, thank you, Jesus. That's, that's how we finished the whole thing. It was with a precision that he can show me in my mind how to operate a software that I don't know how to operate. And in the end, it also was again about no people pleasing and and so forth so you actually uh the things were not going well in terms of with with Mexico doing their part and so uh i remember you told me the story where you had signed this big thick contract okay. and the last and and it was down to the last day and you really needed help from Jesus on a sign like am i to go through with this or am i to fire the company that basically has been working on this in Mexico seems like, again, a decision to be made. Stay with them, fire them. And then when you fire them, then, yeah, then what comes after that at this stage? She's even had communications with uh, film festivals and all kinds of things going on, and she still doesn't know if she'll have a movie. Imagine applying to film festivals and... Oh yeah, well there's one tiny thing here. <laughs> so she ends up, you can tell the story, you, a, a page, the last page of, of a, of a yeah. contract falls onto the floor. So you can imagine, that was two days before I fly to Japan at the evening and the next morning I got this one frame corrected. So that's the only one day left I can, sh I can get everything, the hard drive and all together, then I'm ready to pack and leave for, you know, leave the project also for good. And I'm, I also have to do one more thing to ship it to Portugal, ship the hard drive to Portugal. And then, so I, so Marga, Nicolene's sister, was there on standby to ship it because FedEx closed at this hour, so we were all, like, every part of ready to, to get it shipped. And... As I was putting on, I thought, okay, this contract, no more use anymore. I'm packing. I'm going to throw it into the trash. I'm clear out all my notes of two years. I'm clear out all the paperwork. I am done. And then this one last page fell on the floor. So I pick the it last up. Last page of the contract. Last page of the contract. So I, f I pick it up just to throw it in the trash bin, and it says the deliverables of the, this Mexico form. Um, the deliverables, so I read... I have this, I don't have that, I don't have that, I don't have that. I only have one of the four things they promised. What? So I called them and said, this is not what we agreed on. This, 
doesn't matter, Francis. You got what you need. That's enough. It's it's good. You, you, it's the rest of it is is not important. I said, but that's our contract. Ah,、oh, it's take a long time. I said, I'm flying tomorrow. This needs to be happening today. Didn't they say, oh, let the team in Portugal?、Yeah. They can handle. The stuff、uh, yeah. that we didn't do—the three things out of the four. You see,、yeah. it just keeps coming and coming, all for mind training.、Yeah. All just、yeah. say what you mean, mean what you say, follow through. Basic integrity that、yeah. any of us would would have. Let Portugal team—they can handle. They just simply do this. I said no, but that's not their job. It's it's your job, and it's on paper. So the last day, I said, "You doing this today?" And they're so angry, but that's that's how I have to to make this project finish, to really hold, you know, the, hold true to all our agreement. Our shared agreement is not to be taken light、uh, lightly, because even though they're, f- you know, form, they're just as any other form in in the time and space is not to be taken seriously, but. Somehow the shared agreement, especially when we pray on things and when we agree on, is actually to be followed through. I learned that from Jesus. You know, when I pray and Jesus gave me a very clear instruction, I'm carrying it through to the end, because not because the end result or anything is because where it's coming from. So that was very important to me. So I basically just said to Marga, "Hold off sending it." To FedEx, we have to send it today. So I'm gonna make sure that happens. So I was on the call with Mexico team from morning till end, and they fi- they finished. I think by about five o'clock, so we can send it before FedEx close. And that was that. And the next morning, I I flew. I left Mexico. And so the saga continues. Then they send two hard drives. Of the movie, over to Portugal, and、um, so they send it over so that the Portuguese company can then carry it forward and do what, what they're the, going to the do. The Portuguese handling the image and Mexico handling the sound. So in the end, these two elements going to be merged together, and we decided to have the Portugal team do the merging. So the Mexico just send we just send the whole file over to be merged. And so. Francis calls me up and she says, "Well,、uh, we sent two hard drives and to to send it over to Portugal to go to this company to do the final merge. You know, it's getting down now. We're getting down toward the end of the that part. We aren't into distribution. You you're all part of that tonight, but we're talking about the final merge. And then she says,、uh, 'There's there's an issue.'" And I said, "What's the issue?" She, she said, "Well, there." I was in Japan. Yeah, you were in Japan. She said, "The the the Portuguese immigration is holding the hard drives, and they will not release them. They are in immigration, and they will not release them." And she said, "The credit card that we're using from the movie team, they are somehow they have our credit card." And the immigration, the courier,、yeah. the courier had it, and with, and immigration is charging us every day, and holding both hard drives that are necessary for the team over there to do it, holding it every day, and charging a fee, a daily fee, a daily fee for holding it. And I, I said, but why is immigration? It's almost like it's not like cocaine or. <laughs> you know, although in Portugal, you know, anything goes. But、uh, I'm still thinking, why is immigration holding hostage <laughs> the film at this stage? You know, first it was corrupted, and now it's now it's getting caught up in international politics. The immigration will will not release it, and will pay, charge a penalty to the credit card every day. And she said, "Well, I'm going to have to get to the、bottom. to the bottom of it." Then we find out that it's because the recipient, which is the studio, own the government tax, and、uh, the government say we will not release the hard drive until you pay the tax. 
and it's a big amount, and the studio said, we will not pay that tax. So how long the hard drive will be there? Indefinite. And they, they had only a week because the Cannes Festival and everything was, was pr approaching. They're fully booked except a week for, for our project. And, and they, yeah, the, the hard drives were held. That was also another letting go. Uh, we're like, okay, we, we really reached the end and this is, this is it. Because it's, it's like you could do one thing, then the next, and the next, and then the the immigration they they have are holding the, them hostage, and they will not release them because of the t big tax and everything. And so it's like a, a more like what what now? But everything happens for forgiveness. It's the only purpose. It, it's not ever about the product. It's not about anything. It's about not about the festival showing the film. That it, so. Then the next thing you got guided to do was to send the film over the internet. You know how big the file <laughs> is? Because you sent it on two hard drives, but they've been captured <laughs> at the border and they're being held hostage. And so you ended up, yeah. how long did it take to send? Three days. Three days to send the file over to Portugal to the company over the internet and s bypassing the border. Because Susanna called me from Utah, I was in Japan with Kristen, and she's like, what do we do, Francis? It's, there's no hope and to be finished. I said, let's just pray. So we hang up, and I prayed, and I, I, heard, I said to Jesus, what is this for? And Jesus said, for a miracle. And I was so happy. So I called her back. I said, this is for a miracle. So let's, let's just be miracle-minded, and let's not worry about the rest of it. And then uh, gradually, uh, in the next day or something, the prompt came, let's just send it all over the Internet. So they take a team, a whole team in Mexico, borrow the house from our friend who have fiber optic and move the computers over to their house and, and did a three-day um, project over there with a collaboration. So... So thus, with God, all things are possible. <laughs> and, and that was just to complete the movie. And then began a whole phase then on distribution, the next, uh, the next phase, in terms of really not, now it's how, Jesus, would you use this movie? Applying to film festivals and looking at different options and everything, but, but I think that's been kind of evolving and getting clear. Maybe you can share a little bit about, about way, the way that, it's just day by day we're yeah. discovering. Yeah, I think the thing is, this, this whole journey was such a big lesson to just let him lead the way and do my part, which is very minimal. Listen and follow and don't attempt to, to skip steps and don't attempt to to uh, look too far ahead. So after we finished everything, um, we showed a, a premiere at our um, monastery in August, just two months ago. So this is, tonight will be a European premiere with all of you guys. Um, so after that premiere, we, we just basically laid it out. This is as far as we've gone in our mind. That's, that's as far as we've gone. We didn't see any step further than that, that night. And, um, and then, but after that, so many invitations actually came um, to me and to the team. So we, we actually, so, so many, we had to do a very, a 10 day trip in California straight after just to show the film in San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego. And then next year, we have a big tour around the United States around April or May to show. But it feels like it's not really just a screening event. There is so much context about this movie, like today, what we're sharing all throughout the week. It is really a case study, so to speak, because Spirit want us to... To, to see how, you know, every symbol, every project, every relationship in this world can be used for him 
a product may come through, it's not going to be the moment we say yes, then, you know, that's done. It's actually we go through a lot of seeming obstacles. We clear a lot, a lot of things in our unconscious mind, which reflect, you know, which is showing up in the conscious awareness through, throughout the consistent saying yes. But ultimately, I think it's so, it is so profound, it's so simple. It seems hard, but it's so simple on my part. It's so joyful and so miraculous. I think the spirit just wants us to live a miraculous life as long as we still are here in this world. He just wants us to know, give our lives, give our mind, give a project, a collaboration, a relationship over to him. It's so miraculous and so magical. My life in the last 10 years, in the last two and a half years, is so magical because I got to be the witness of, oh my God, this happened. This problem happened, but I don't need to sort out the problem. I pray for the solution. Wow, the problem is resolved. It was so much fun and so much joy and laughter and collaboration with different people. And it's really a magical journey, and I think that is really the, the central message. And I want to share that message more than uh, just the movie itself. So we were saying that when we um, did the California tour, and the next year when I, I'm going to um, travel in the United States, it will be more like at least a, a weekend retreat with context, uh, with some some teaching and some experiential, like the diet session that we did, and the showing and the Q&A, because it, it is pointing to some kind of practical, practical way we can live our lives. And I really want it to be a thorough, um, a thorough message. It's just not... But what, what it's... Tonight you will see that what is showing up on screen is already very deep and very, um, yeah, very in terms of the healing, you can see a lot. That's another thing I thought to Jesus many times. I thought, you pick an area I feel the most inadequate and incompetent to do. I just, I feel so inadequate in artistic expressions and pictures and images. And because I was very logical and you know, analysis. And yet, he said to me that the best way to, to, to teach and to share is to show. You show your own life and show. It's not to talk. It, the talking is, is really just for you, you know, because the talking is a practice of letting Jesus show me what is to be talked about. But it's to show... So this is what I think is, is very effective because people's lives are shown. And knowing the context and how it got made just give you more um, context and appreciation because we set the camera there at the beginning. All throughout, we have no idea who was going to go through what transformation. And that was all captured on screen, and you can see it. There are relationship um, issues, couple. There, there, there are a couple in the in the movie tonight. You will see that they they arrive there engaged as an engaged couple, and when issues come up, they have to be there to share. You know, to 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 share no private thoughts with each, with each other in inside a relationship. And there are family con construction there too. Actually, Nicolene is sitting here. She is the aunt, and there's a mother and daughter. The three of them, all on a spiritual journey, they show up in the monastery individually, and but they, they're together. And how is their relationship inside that context? And we also have um, a cook. So she... 
she was an amazing cook. She came to the monastery and cooked for all our retreats for 10 years. Such an amazing cook. Like food here it was just professional. She owned her own restaurant. And yet she reached a point, she was going through motions. You know, there was no spark anymore because cooking was good, was what she loved. But that's the only way she knows she can be loved by anybody. It become a burden. It become a responsibility. It's this love and hate. I want it because, because that's that's how I know I have a value to you. But I don't want it because it's ugh, it's heavy. It's responsibility. So that's also her um, transformation journey in in that movie, and how of course you will see a little bit of what Emily talked about, how we use prayer to decide everything. You know, we don't really know the characters and and their prayers or the, what issue they were facing when they came here. But you see, through prayer, solution was offered. Nobody needs to know problems, but if we pray together, solution got offered, and that's that's what you can see on the screen too. So. As you watch the movie tonight, w- again, I would like you to watch it very much like remember when we watched Rocket Man, and we it was more watch your thoughts, watch your emotions, because again, that's where the healing occurs is in the mind, and so as you watch the movie, pay close attention to what's going on in your consciousness, because that's going to be the greatest healing value. It's like every movie. It's just a backdrop for mind training, and that is so important. The listen and follow is the, is really the message we're sharing. How important that that goes on all through the day, and even through your nighttime dreams, you can be guided by spirit. You can have lucid dreams. You can go through. Oh, here comes another replacement. We got a backup. We blew a we blew a tire. We're going on, <laughs> but. I would also say that, you know, how we talked about the script is written, that was our script day yesterday, everything's the past. Uh, seek not to change the world. Seek rather to change the world. The last one. You'll see who you are. Okay, very good, <laughs> Adriana. So, what I'm saying is. You know, even this basic lesson about seeking not to change the world. You know, if you listen to everything Francis has been sharing, it's so much based on listen and follow, and it's not about trying to fix or change people, or fix or change, even in the end, the movie. You saw the trust it takes. It's it's corrupted, it's this, it's that, it's captured by the Portuguese immigration. I mean... You, you have to just totally let go and stay with, listen and follow. What do you have for me, spirit? You see how safe that is and how wonderful? You're not concerned about the outcomes. Did the film make it? Did it live? Did it die? Listen and follow. I, I'm going to do that. When, when I was down in Mallorca in Spain, you know, I, I had a friend come all the way down uh, from Germany to interview me for her radio show, and, and we were talking afterwards and went outside on the, the back port, porch and talking about it. And I said, oh, yeah, we've got this movie coming. I started talking about the movie. She got all excited. She said, I can help you get that movie into a German film festival. And she said, but I will have to, of course, re-edit the movie. <laughs> and so here we go through all of this. And then I can get it in the German festival, but I will have to re-edit it. Then when we we went on a tour in California, we were I think we were in Los Angeles, 
And there was a young man who, who was there who lives with his parents, and he watched the whole thing. But he's quite uh, good with watching films in his mind and everything. And he was basically saying, if the purpose of this movie was to tell people and promote the monastery, he said, uh, I can help you. You need to redo the whole movie. You, you start to see, it's like it's the mind determines what things are for, and then it offers his advice. It, he was even offering a suggestion <laughs> about the motive for making the movie. And that's just the way the ego works. It's always projecting meaning out. I, that's lesson number two in the workbook. I've given everything I see, all the meaning it has for me. And then it's trying to adapt and adjust. Oh, you'd make a nice marriage partner. There are a few things that you need to change. <sighs> is one of them. Uh, uh, you know, it, but uh, you, you see how it works. The ego is always reading meaning and saying, oh, this would work out really good at this festival or this or that, if you re-edit the movie. And here Francis has used the whole thing for listen and follow. And, and we just have a good laugh at all this because Jesus is always so humorous. He's always pointing out, it's your own lesson. It's always your own lesson. No, it's not there. No, it's not that. It's your own lesson. Forgive. Uh, uh, but, but forgive. Uh, uh, forgive, you know. It's, we know that feeling, you know, where we think we can improve something. Even with The Course in Miracles, you know, I thought Ken and Judy and Bill and Helen, you know, did a pretty good job bringing The Course into this realm. I mean, I got that book, and then... I thought, great, I'm just going to use this book and I'm going to read it, I'm going to apply it, I'm going to pray to Jesus, pray to the Holy Spirit, and, and follow whatever they say. And then there was like a second book that came out, and an errata, oh, we, we have to make some corrections, and then, then, then a third edition, and then a fourth edition, and then a fifth edition, and I'm like, I think what's going on is still a little bit... I can do it better, you know. I can do it better the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time. You know, this is just the way the ego operates. Whatever is there, even though the first edition said, seek not to change the world. Seek rather to change your mind about the world. Could read, seek not to change A Course in Miracles. <laughs> Seek rather to change your mind about A Course in Miracles. I mean, in the five editions, basically the workbook's the same, and that's what we're supposed to apply. We're supposed to use it, apply it. We don't have to turn into the scribes and Pharisees, and oh, I think I'd change this, and I'd add this on, and leave this out, and, you know, like we're, like we're making a birthday cake, and we can't stop with the icing. We keep, ooh. No, no, that's a little, little there. Oh, oops, missed a little spot there, you know. Oh, you know, maybe some candles, you know. Maybe some candles that don't go out, you know. You know, it's just, we don't need to add anything to the world. All we have to do is listen and follow and see the world differently. And, and that's just what this whole miraculous case study has really been about, is that one thing. And also, just if, you know, if, if I had this goal of making the end result, you can see how emotionally ups and downs I would have to go through. How many turmoil, stress I would go through emotionally if the end goal is a product. But if the goal is listen and follow, how can... The whole throughout the journey, you can stay very, very gleeful because the opportunity of listen and follow is always there. That's where nothing can affect your state of mind anymore because the goal is something the ego cannot take away. So the ego cannot affect your 
your emotional state of mind when I give power to one thing that he cannot take away, which is my purpose to listen and follow. And it, is, it has been really joyful. And that, that's why I say the li- this life, you know, before, the, before God takes the final step, this happy dream can be so joyful once the purpose becomes single. And I believe you, you would agree with that. The single purpose. And when we, you know, wash away everything else, it is really a journey of washing away everything but that purpose. Then once that is, is done, it just feels so happy and joyful. <laughs> well, I'm feeling that uh, if you want to start to come up and prepare, if you're here... And then Emily has, uh, I got a microphone up here if it doesn't work. Emily has wanted to share a few things. While you're here, we've brought all kinds of books and everything from all around just to make it real easy for you because it's not so easy to mail them and all over the country and the world. So Emily's going to share a bit while Ned is is setting up there. And then that premiere of that... uh, the theme song. This is the, the this is the song that named the movie. So that'll be great to hear that too because it's so profound. Yeah, thank you so much, David and Francis. That was so inspiring. I've seen the movie and I can't wait to see it again tonight. I feel like it's yeah, like even a deeper level for me. So thank you. So yeah, beautiful um, treat now. Netta is going to play the song um, that in, inspired, yeah, Take Me Home, inspired the name of the movie. And I know I did hear this song the first time Netta played it at the mystery school. And I just had like tears rolling down my face. It was so beautiful. And still every time I listen to it now, it just touches me so deeply. So thank you, Netta. Oh, 
take me home today. Oh, I wanna go home today. Take me home where I truly
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>